Okay, I just got the cylinder head back from the machine shop. I was running so far behind, guys, I had to pay somebody a little extra to put the valve seals in for me, inspect the valve guides and whatnot, and clean up the head. Sorry I couldn't cover that for you. However, sometimes you got to do what you got to do. And at least it's a, you know, at least I'm reassured that the deck is true. You know, they didn't have to machine it at all. You know, all the cam journals look good, valve guides look good, and they said the seats all look good. I wish there was something they could have did for me with the valve seats to try to guarantee it, but they said no matter what they do, they couldn't guarantee it. And as far as they were concerned, the seats, they look fine. So we're going to take our chances. Other than that, I got the exhaust manifold bolted on. It's pretty straightforward. You just got your, you take that heat shield off, the EGR tube, and you take your bolts off around the perimeter and put it back on. Pretty straightforward. Just reverse the procedure when you take it off the other head. Just put it on in the same manner and torquing the specs. Cam's all reinstalled. That's just two bolts behind that cam pulley. A little locking bracket comes out and you just slide the cam out and slide, slide it back in the new head and use a little assembly lube along the way and you're good. Okay, I got everything prepped out here, ready to go. New head gaskets, new head bolts. These use stretch bolts, so you gotta replace the bolts every time you remove the head bolts. They gotta be replaced. These are gonna be angle torqued. Uh, we're about ready to cover up our work, so I hope I covered enough of this for you guys. Pretty much, just make sure all your clearances are good. Double check, triple check. When you hone it, just make a couple passes. I used a ball hone. Two or three passes just to knock that glaze off the cylinder for the new uh, rings to seal, and you'll be good. You don't want to get carried away because you don't want to take too much off. You want everything to be pretty even from cylinder to cylinder, so I think we got as close as we could get it. For what we have. These Fell Pro head gaskets use that print seal technology so I'm just going to give it a shot without anything on it. Now you see this head gasket is labeled top so you're going to want this side of the gasket facing up. I had a couple dowels they were actually one stayed in the cylinder actually both of these stayed in the cylinder head the one head from the junkyard had one dowel in it I just removed the dowels from the cylinder head and installed them in the block keeps your gasket from sliding. So we're going to install this gasket dry. Okay, I guess we're ready for the head. Just want to give everything a once over real quick. Make sure nothing's in our way. I know I'm going to have to wait till tomorrow to finish this up because I, if you listen to this idler tensioner for timing belt, it's got a little noise to it so I'm going to replace that and nobody had it in stock so I got to wait till tomorrow till that arrives. So for tonight, we're just going to put the cylinder head on and button it up. Sure, it would be nice to have a second hand right about now. What I used to do, guys, just short on time, and that shouldn't be an excuse. Take a note, take two of the old head bolts, cut them off, grind a notch in the top so you could use a screwdriver on it, and then it gives you a nice guide from way up high, and it sits it nice and square on the head gasket. All right. Just wanna, if you gotta set it down, set it down softly. There you go. We're in place. If you take notice, I like to use thread sealer, a high temp thread sealer. You can get that at any part store on the head bolts. You know, it's something that they don't mention in the service manual, but something I do. Oh, and a major step I almost skipped again. See, that's the thing I hate about these rust jobs. I don't get to give you every detail. Make sure you clean out the threads where the head bolt's going. Make sure you clean out all the head bolt threads, blow all the antifreeze out of it, all the oil, and clean the threads. Run a thread chaser through them. Because any restriction gives you an improper torque. In addition, if you leave any fluid in there, say antifreeze or oil, that migrated into those bores for the thread, it'll hydraulic, what they call hydraulic, and when you tighten it up, the fluid will hydraulic, and if it doesn't make its way around the threads quick enough, it'll have no place to go and it'll, it'll crack the block. Ready for some weird torque, you guys? First pass, 44 foot-pounds. Second, 
loosen them all up two turns, third, torque them back down to 44, then 90 degrees, then an additional 90 degrees. So, we're going to start here. Number one, I got the torque run set to 44 foot pounds. Now loosen them all up two turns or so. Just gonna use your regular ratchet to loosen them. Okay, retorque them down to 44. Okay, I'm gonna get them close to the ratchet. Okay, now I didn't torque them to 44, I just ran them down somewhere in the vicinity with a ratchet. I'm almost certain I gotta go tighter. So the torque runs is set to 44. When you're double checking, you don't have to go in order. Okay, now we're going to degree them 90 degrees. For this, you use an angle finder. I think I, I demonstrated this in other videos. The degree gauge, they have a few different names for it. But you clip it somewhere in the, on the block. That just prevents this wheel from spinning. Get it on your head bolt, set this to zero. In a perfect world guys, you want to get this in one turn if room allows. So you want to go from zero to 90 in a constant motion. I'm going to use my torque wrench cranked up. Some people may not agree with this. I'm gonna put my torque wrench somewhere around 100 pounds. I don't think we'll be hitting that. But um, this is the first 90 degree pass. All right, here's zero. There's nine. Okay, it's one. This is zero. Try to position yourself to get it in one pass. 90 will be right here. Two. Set this to zero. 90 will be right here. Three.
Okay. Now, I gotta make one more pass at 90 degrees. Okay, and this is what you call step five. We're gonna go additional 90 degrees. These bolts are made to stretch. It creates a clamping force on the cylinder head. They use these a lot on aluminum heads, a lot of newer engines. They've been using these type of bolts for years. They're called stretch bolts. That's why you do not want to reuse them because used head bolts are already stretched. If you stretch them one more time, they will snap most times. And I want to trust them for as far as clamping force. So here we go. Set ourselves up for one more pass at 90 degrees. So we're going to have to take this from zero to 90. Just like the previous step. Here we go. One. Two. I'm following the table over here on my computer, so it's not like I'm memorizing these. I am going by the table. Okay, we're all torqued guys. One more quick note to avoid any confusion, just in case you're wondering why I didn't set the cam to number one, top dead center with your timing marks, because right now it really doesn't matter. Reason being is because I don't have my rockers, my lifters or anything installed yet, but prior to installing our lifters and our rockers, we indeed want to set this, set our, all of our timing marks, and I'll cover that tomorrow after we replace the idler tensioner.